Hi everyone, it's Steve back with you and today we're going to be continuing our series with the Necroplex Terrain. We're going to be looking at building a bunker storage area for oil and chemical barrels. So this is what we're going to build. This is built with, obviously as I said, the Necroplex 3D printed walls. So let's get to the table and crack on. Right, so what do we need? I've cut myself a piece of vinyl floor tile. Don't worry about the pattern being off because the pattern actually doesn't have any indent but there's a texture to the top. Stuck a bit of paper on the bottom to get rid of the adhesive side. It has got a bit of a warp so this could be an experiment to see it when we stick these pieces of necroplex down. These are just walls that it should in theory hold it flat. Fingers crossed. So we have a plain wall, two detailed walls, four corners, and two shorts. I've cut this at seven inches and then that come in about three quarters of an inch to give a rough idea where it's going to fit. So we am going to start in a corner, grab some hot glue. I'm just going to whack it on the bottom. This is a bit of a fingers crossed moment and roughly line it up. That looks pretty good. Right, that one's going to be a plain one. This is the bit I love about hot glue. I always get it everywhere. There you go. Right down. There we go. Line it up to the wall we've already got. Uh, try and get it there and give it a good push. We've still got a bit of warp, but it's. I think we might be all right. Fingers crossed. Next corner, right the glue. Slightly off camera here doing this. Hang on, just bring this in a little bit. What I'm doing is literally putting the glue on the bottom. Line it up. Give it a push. Right, that's turn. So now we want to oh, get rid of the glue. Make sure you stick the details on the outside. And down again. Put a slide. There we go. That's getting better. Turn. Wipe. Come on, off you come. Time. There you go. Doesn't matter if it's not 100% square. These guys, I don't think, were known for architecture. Right, I have to put another glue stick in. Ah, oh, dear me. And back down it again. Line it up. Give it a good push, hold this one down. Like that. Get a bit of a walk there, it's a bit of a pain. Let's see what happens. Let's keep going. We're committed. Or should be committed, I don't know what's the truth. Right, there we go. And last one. we've got some join marks so all we're going to do there is grab our hot glue gun I'll try and do this so you can see it and just come along it with the hot glue these like weld lines all 
Right, turn around to the inside. Okay, that's not too bad actually, I'm quite surprised. So, what I'm going to do is right around the outside with the weld line around the bottom, I think, just to tidy this up a little bit. Just like that, here we go. So, Of hot glue, so there's multiple sins. And boom, and there, and there. Yeah, do that. So I feel the quiet, concentrating. Oh man, my brain only does one thing at once. Can I talk and actually do something? <laughs> Not if I want to do it properly. Right. I need to do that. Let's just go a bit around the inside as well. Pushing the inside being a bit trickier. It's working our way along. And there we go. Turn. Some of this has actually got glue anyway, which the excess probably pushed it down. There we are. Not too perfect. scenic brush and some green paint just work it into the bristles and here you always see those odd fibers from printing in hot glue so we're just working in a circular motion around we go this is a GW scenic brush it's probably the worst brush I ever bought um, it's losing its hair faster than me so I keep cracking around with it you see me picking out hairs as I go and bristles it's like, bit of a nightmare bang off this <laughs> bit more paint work our way around the edges and then we're getting there no real technique as such sort of a circular stroke rough motion it's just sort of a rough base color to break up the pure black to see the colors have a slight variance when you come to the next color yeah more bristles well there's another one <sighs> So I don't know if this brush is going to be bordering me by the time we finish this piece of terrain. Right, down the last side I think. We're nearly there. Yeah, we're getting there. Oh, a few touch-ups in there. Get rid of the brush marks. Oh, am I there? Am I there? Am I there? Yep, so we'll let that dry a bit. And then we're coming back with the next colour. Right, we're going to grab some burnt umber, thin it down with a drop of water, spread it out on our palette. This is because we're going to need a sponge again. Right, so we grab our makeup sponge and we gradually dab over the top of it. Blend in the two colours to so work our way around the whole board, running right outside. Doing the walls at the moment. Hindsight, you could have probably done them all at the same time. But there we go, so we're going to work around. Now I think we're going to stop thinking about adding our second colour. 
So we've got some bright orange. We're going to apply this just to the edge of our brown on our palette. Just like that. Give it a mix, but not a full mix. So you've got bits of the colour mixed in with the brown, but still the orange. Work our way around again, applying it. All around the outsides. There we go. Nearly that. Yep. So, dab dab. There we go. Oh, must have another hair. Right. Yeah, all done. Done the base coat on the floor. We're just going to get our brush and work around the edges with the brown paint. If you see, it's a challenge to keep this on camera. Um, <laughs> drawings are getting old, not going to see very well, I'm afraid. So, I just have to explain that all I'm doing is like an overbrush of the walls, not highly accurate. Don't worry about bits of black showing too much. It's just really a base coat. We're going to go over it later on with a sponge and other colours as well anyway to give it a bit more detail and variance. There we go, nearly there, whacking around, make sure you get on the top edges. Oh, yep. Yeah. It's just easiest to twist it as you go and you see where you're working. There we are, last side I think. Yep, yeah, I think we're there. That's good. Right, so now we're going to get our orange again, same thing. Got a sponge, dab around the top. Yep, and same technique down the sides. And I'm off camera again. Woohoo. Oh, joys of old age. So, <laughs> I have to work on that with the second camera in the future. A bit more orange. Never have enough orange. Right, and uh, now we're going to add some really bright spots. Which we'll find we'll cover up when we do the wash in a minute. Which is right, we'll continue with our orange onto the floor. There we go, we'll just gradually work it in. Don't have to cover the whole thing. So I've done a couple of corners. I did find the wash as I said we'll blend this out so I did go back over it later. Which we will see as we move along. There we go, nearly there. A couple more bits here and there where I fancy giving it a bit of a brighter look. And there you pretty well have it. Right, we're going to grab some black wash. This is one I made myself, even though I stuck it in an island bottom. Lock it on the top of the walls and let it run down. And we'll just give it a coat over. Don't worry about it pulling, pulling too much. But get your tongue out. Cheek boy. Right, uh, we'll work our way around. Um, the only problem I did find with this is I did not think about the crafting paints, which we'll see in a minute what issue we had. So we're nearly there, just cover it up, working our way around. And I think that's pretty much it. A bit of a sponge off for really high excess areas. Right, it's all dried up. I did have to go back over with a little bit more orange just to lift it. Now I want to bring up the walls a little bit. So I've got some Necron Compound by GW. Oh, that's freaky. Very strange looking paint. Never used it, so let's give it a go. Oh, grab a cloth. Right, we've got some paint on our brush, we would start with a light flicking motion. As I said, this is the first time using this paint, and as I go along I sort of discover it's more, what's better as an overbrush than a dry brush. So it's obviously a bit less um, cautious and start whacking it around. And make sure you get the top edges. There we go, still flicking it. See, I'm gradually getting more longer strokes actually putting it across actually using the 3d print grain to my in my favor for a change instead of trying to hide it i'm actually using it a bit more paint work it onto your cloth so your brush isn't too loaded work it on the insides shake it at all you can already see it starting to come together definitely looks a lot better you get more of a difference between your floor and the walls now and we're nearly there i think yeah just working around, I'm going to look at the detail bits, see if they need a bit more coming at different angles so it catches in different places. A bit more on the top, and I 
think I'm happy with that. No, a bit more paint, okay. Oh, then we decided to give the floor a slight overbrush because we've got the texture of the tile. This actually helps bring it up. Um, I was actually quite surprised what a difference this does make. It's only very, very light. Grab some GW Nalic Oxide. This is a greeny, bluey sort of paint. It's very chalky. We would just work it in along the edges to the crevices. This is uh, like a corrosion. So we don't really have to think about what we're putting in. We just work it in gently. We grab another technical paint. This is Typhus Corrosion. And we just dab it in where it's required. Don't really overthink it. Put it about if you need to. It's like a very dark brown, rough sort of paint. And we're nearly there, I think. Let's gradually work our way around. So I'm not overly thinking it. Right, we're going to do the strips on the edge. So I just grabbed some black paint and I've got a little bit of plastic off cut from a packet of some kind. And I sponged it along. This The idea here was I was going to do a stencil afterwards and sponge on the yellow and it just didn't take. So, to be honest, I wouldn't bother doing it in black. I'd probably go along the edges in a white in the future. But we live and learn. So there you go. I've done the black. I grabbed a bit of brown just to work my way around, just to tidy it up a little bit. So I probably should have done the black in a white colour. And it would have took less coats of the yellow paint afterwards. Right, we grabbed our piece of plastic again and then a stencil I cut. Let's try and do the yellow markings um, it didn't work at all but I thought I'd leave it in and show you anyway so I tried to do a sponge effect to end up with sort of a more of a subtle yellow and it just phew, did not take very well could have done it with an airbrush but I didn't want to use an airbrush on this piece as the idea of doing the stencil didn't work I ended up painting over the whole edge strip in yellow freehand um, if I knew I was going to do this, I'd have probably done it in white, so it didn't take as many coats of yellow. But we got, we're now going to paint on the black lines. So I've done the first one, just come across at an angle and roughly paint them in. I'm not too worried about them all being the same size. Um, it tends up varying a bit all over the place, but it actually works quite well. And the end result looked quite good. So just do it freehand. Tidy up as you go. I'll paint just keep the same angle even as you go around the corners and now we've finished with that we're going to grab some agrax earth shade it's brown wash thin it down a drop of water and it's just to go over the yellow just to dirty it up a bit so it's not too clean and I need a sponge just to take off any excess as required and there you go that's all done ready for a matte varnish right there you have it our finished piece as I showed you at the beginning and now you know how to do it and what not to do. I left the mistakes in so you can all learn from them. I'll show you what worked, what doesn't, what doesn't work. Um, this craft paint should let it dry a bit longer between before putting on the washes. And then I would have had to go over it slightly more with the orange to bring the colours back up. But overall, I'm quite happy with it. I've um, tried a few new video tricks here. This ending and the intro was filmed on a webcam instead of my normal camera. If you think it looks better, please let us know. Um, done some voiceover work on this using a new mic. If you prefer it, stick some notes in the comments. Anything's helpful to help us move forward and improve quality of things. So please like, share, subscribe and get this video out there. And I'll be seeing you all soon. Take care. Cheers.